Welcome everybody, it's just Nan and I'm here for story time and so is Mr. Bear. Isn't he cute? Yes, his name is Mr. Bear. I couldn't think of anything better, so that's what he is. And I think he's a mister because it's like brown. Like I think if it was a girl, she'd have on like pink and brown. But anyways, so the story for today, guys, is talking about giving and giving generously. And it comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 11. And I'm just going to paraphrase this real quickly for you. So basically it says, if you give a little, you get a little. If you give big, you get, you know, you'll receive big. Um, and when you give, give generously, give like with a caring heart, a giving heart, a loving heart, um, be cheerful about it. Like not saying you gotta go walk around like, Hey, there you go. Just have a give, you know, but be, be joyful in your givings. Um, and not reluctant, you know, like if you don't want to give it, like if you're not going to give it from your heart, you're not giving it from a place of love, don't even waste your time giving it because you aren't going to receive any blessings from it. Um, not saying that we give only to receive blessings, but if you're going to give something, you don't want to attach your negativity to whatever it is that you're giving, you know, like you want to attach a positive spirit on something that you're giving and you want to make the person that you're giving feel good about what you're giving them. And that entail will have them to be able to um, take what you've blessed them with and they see that the joy that you have they'll be able to tell others about it and give the thanksgiving to God and praises to him about how wonderful it was of whatever it is that you gave them. And hopefully that cycle, um, as someone shared in group, just kind of cycles like you plant a seed and then that seed grows and then it plants a seed and then that seed grows and then it plants a seed. And it's all these seeds of greatness because you can be planting seeds of negativity and those will grow too. I'm just saying like real talk. But anywho, that's basically the story. Um, but I would highly recommend, of course, you go and read it for yourself. All the versions kind of just gut it out the same. I love the easy read because it's in plain English and I don't have to do any like equations to figure out what it's saying. Um, but anyway, so this is my take on, I got a couple takes for this one. So the giving factor, we usually, and I know like in my group, we're not supposed to use we statements, but this is not our group guys. So I can use we, I'm just kidding. But no, seriously, sometimes, um, I know I myself personally feel as the word give means money when I'm in church. They start talking about give, talk about money. They don't never want to do a coat drive. They don't never want to do a canned food drive. They don't never want to do none of them drives. They just want you to give some money, right? And so I think I've come up with an answer for those that ask the question, what are they doing with the money that I'm giving them? If God has blessed you to give um, in a financial aspect um, in a lot of areas, because it's not just church, but I'm going to primarily talk about giving to the church because we have an issue sometimes about that 10% and what they're doing with it. Okay. So here we go. First of all, now I have not gotten this from any minister. I've just received this in my spirit just to throw it out there. So I'm not, you know, advertising on that, but this is my thought. Okay. I'm going to give, walk you through my church experience on a Sunday morning, Sunday morning, go to church, turn in. There's usually officers coning off the road. I drive on up, swoop up on the side, walk my kids inside the church or whatever. And then they go inside and I check them in and they go to something that's called kids church. And they say they're why I go to church. Then I walk out like a boss, get back in the car, drive around. And someone's in the parking lot saying here, you can park here. So they already got a safe parking spot for me, right? Like I got VIP parking. Then I get out of the car and then there's someone that pulls up and says, Hey, good morning. Would you like a ride? And so, yes, I usually want a ride. So I jump on and we take a ride to the front of the church and he drops us off at the front. And then I get out and he doesn't do like this. He says, have a blessed day. And then I walk out like a boss down that runway, right? Walk to the doors because someone is there to open these doors, right? Because that queen has arrived, right? I know everybody feels like that. All my church members and my friends, I know y'all feel like a boss on Sundays. Like, you got to feel like people love you because our church really takes good care of us. So, as you walk in, someone's there to greet you, shake your hand, give you high fives, tell you good morning. And they open up these doors. And then as you walk in, you hear the chatter of the people that's talking outside of the sanctuary. And then over here to the left, you'll notice there's some coffee. And yes, my husband every Sunday goes and gets him a cup of coffee every Sunday. He doesn't drink coffee Monday through Saturday, but on Sunday mornings, he is a coffee drinker and he goes over there. And I think he do it because his mama didn't let him eat or drink in church. Unlike my mother, my mother was like, he ain't baby eat this. He ain't have a peppermint. He ain't have some chips. He ain't have some carrots. But his mom was like, no boy, you ain't drinking in church. You ain't eating in church. We ain't doing it in the house of the Lord. We're going to respect God's house. I'm just kidding. I don't know what she told him, but every Sunday he goes and he gets him some coffee. So he go gets his coffee and there are people over there that are assisting and 
As soon as you get your coffee, they wipe it up. And then, you know, we go to the doors and someone opens up the doors. And then you walk through them like a boss, right? And then someone comes up and says, how many? And you'll say like however many of you it is. And sometimes it's just one because my husband is also one of those people that's asking other people on the other side of the church, how many? And so I'll tell them. And then they just walks me up to the front. Give me a nice, good front row seat like it's been saved just for me. And then the music is playing, y'all. And it's like, and you got the strobe lights going, like, psh, 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 and spotlights going. And somebody's up there with the angelic voice on the mic getting down and stuff. And then my favorite part, they bust the words out on the screen. So now your girl got karaoke. They didn't ask for a cover charge. And I'm up in this thing, baby. Up in it, singing my lungs out, off key, of course, but I'm in there. Ain't nobody booing me or putting me out or nothing. And they get quiet sometimes, the musical instruments do, and they want the church to go through and sing for them. So now I'm in concert with karaoke, okay? And then this lovely guy, after all that calms down, gets on the stage and says, good morning, everybody. How are y'all doing? You know, y'all feeling all right? Or whatever he says. And then he allows... The message that God has given him, he brings it to the stage and gives it to a multitude of people, right? He gives it to us. Like, God told him the message, so he got it. So he don't technically have to go and tell us, but he's sharing his talent. He's sharing his gift that God has given him. And God has given him the gift of the word, and he's sharing his word with us, right? And then, you know, he does this whole thing, and it's about, you know, 30, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your church or whatever. And, and he does this, and then... He gets off the stage, you know, and then he goes off to the side and do whatever. And then you leave out and, you know, everyone's socializing. Church is over and stuff like that. And you go in the restroom and you reach out and there's toilet paper. And then you come out and to wash your hands because in public, yes, you need, you must have good hygiene in public. I'm just saying, if you don't do it at home, let's make sure we do it in public. And so at my church, you go to the sink and there's rocks. Y'all, it's rocks in the sink. Beautiful. When I purchase my new home, it's going to be rocks up in my sink. I'm just letting y'all know. Stealing that idea. Hashtag stole it from the church. Okay. Not stealing their rocks. Just the rock idea. And so you put your hand out and get your little soap and you do your lathering. Right. And you wash it up real good. And you put your hands underneath that warm, holy water because it's always warm. Okay. It's never cold. I don't know why. And then you reach out, get paper towels and you might say, lady, not cleaning. And it's always clean. Right. But you have these questions. I just gave you a whole series of coins, right? That the church is paying for. Oh, I didn't mention. Yeah, I talked about the strobe lights, right? And then, you know, you got the band instruments that cause. But when you walk into the house of the Lord, there's lights. There's water. It's probably Wi-Fi. I've just never logged into it. Uh, that's what the preacher is doing with your money. He is paying the church house bills and then he is getting his wages for his work. Like this man got a message, right? God told him and he could have kept it to himself, but instead he shared his gift. He gave us the message, right? He's already giving and you ask him, why are you giving him? No, you taking care of the house of the Lord because ain't nobody ever say, Hey, come, Hey, do you want to come to my church? And you say, Oh yeah. And they say, Oh, make sure you bring a chair. No. When you go to church, you expect there to be a chair for you, a VIP chair just for you, front, back, center, middle, wherever, but somewhere for you to sit down. You expect to receive the message. You expect to hear the message. It's not just the people on the front row get to hear the message. People all the way in the back of the church get to hear the message. It's not just people on the front row get to hear the music. The people all the way in the back row get to hear the music. You know why? Because they got sound systems, right? They got microphones. They got speakers. They got a stage they even sitting on. Like you inside of a building. Do the house that you live in not cost? It's common sense, people. That's where the money is going. Now, is he getting a check? Yes, because on your job, in your works that you do, that God has allowed you to do, the gifts that he's given you to do, you get a paycheck, don't you? Exactly. Don't be asking. Then on top of that, we be asking the church, what the church doing with our money? But ain't nobody asking their uncle where their money at. Hmm? It's February. Tax season has started, right? Now, some people will not file until April because they're going to have to pay in. Because their uncle going to want some more money, right? And then you got the people that's filed early. They got their little cards early. Got them extra, you know, 2500 you know, 2500 you know, on a little debit card that they can use early. Uh, you ain't asking your uncle what he doing with your money. Then you got those of us that are sitting here like, maybe, maybe not. Hoping that he catch a sister a break this year. If he do, I'm going to be balling. Not really. I'm going to be trying to get a house. I'm just going to put that out there for you. But 
every year Uncle Sam gives this gamble of you may or may not get something back from him. But yet we pay into him. He don't ask you for no money. He not asking about your free will. He just take your money. Like he just rude. Like he like, oh, when you get paid, give me this. So I'm just saying my Christian brothers and sisters, how about we get together and see if we can have our tithes automatically taken out of our salaries. So when we go to our jobs, we need to negotiate for 10% more. But um, after one of my group members did some calculations, we need about 18% more that we need to be asking for. So with that being said, go in and ask for 20% of what you really want. That way you can pay your tithes. You know what I'm saying? And it won't even be an issue. You can live off of what you got left. I'm just kidding. But anywho, stop asking the church what they're doing with their money if you're not asking Uncle Sam. Because Uncle Sam ain't out here fixing streets because my mama's road is raggedy. Okay? I ride down that bad boy since I was a kid and be like trying to skip a pothole the whole way. This is how you do down the road. Which is the happiest street I've ever been on because I know once I get to the end, I'm at my mom's house. But I'm just saying, Uncle Sam ain't fixing all these schools. I don't know exactly what he said he's going to be doing, but I don't think he's doing what he's doing. And if you're not outside with your little picket fence asking him, you know, picketing, like, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam, if you're not sitting there contacting your congressmen and your legislators and all this other kind of crap, and you got these police officers out here that's going wild, all this other kind of cool stuff, if you're not questioning them, don't be questioning God what he's doing with your money. Okay? We got our taxpayer dollars, right? You need to go ask Uncle Sam what he's doing with your money if you're going to ask the church what they're doing with yours. That's just my 50 cents. This is my total opinion. Um, hope it blessed you because it very much so blessed me to get my life in order about my giving. And as well as realize that you have other resources to give. It's not just your money. It is also your time and your talent. And the preacher is giving you his talent. So figure out what your talent is as well as your, you know, giving if you're blessed to give. And give, but give with a cheerful heart. Don't be upset about giving the people and then be petty and get on the phone and say, girl, you know, such and such, call me to help her pay her light bill. And then be mad when she go buy her baby some shoes. Yes, she might have taken your money to go buy her baby some shoes. Or actually, she might have really took your money to pay that light bill and then went and bought her baby some shoes because her baby may have needed a new pair of shoes. Period. You don't know people's story. If your heart feels to give, give. Give free heartily. If your heart does not, keep your stuff to yourself. Because don't nobody need your negative spirits being played out here in the world. Don't nobody need you to be out there giving out stuff and then telling everybody what you're doing because it's not about you. It's about his kingdom. It's about God and his glory. And so we really don't want to hear your story. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I'm really not. But I'm just saying. Peace out, guys. Have a great day. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.